there are many people in this industry who are focused on when this technology known as 3D printing will become much more of a manufacturing tool as opposed to just a prototyping tool. Additive manufacturing technology, often referred to as 3D printing, is still mostly used for prototype design in many fields. There are a couple of exceptions, however. In the medical industry, for example, many 3D printing machines are employed or used as manufacturing tools because they can build custom parts such as hearing aids, dental appliances, and surgical models models very cost-effectively. In the aerospace and the automotive industry, there are many parts for planes and high-end cars that are better made in this custom capability of 3D printing than in a manufacturing mass production capacity, and for the same reason, the return on investment is better. The entertainment community is another area where 3D printing functions well in a manufacturing role as opposed to just a prototyping role. Not only do the parts not necessarily have to function, you can produce multiple parts with minor tweaks to them. Will AM technology disrupt manufacturing? At this point, it is my opinion that no, it will not. Additive manufacturing or 3D printers will not replace traditional CNC and injection molding machines at this time. Those equipment, the CNC and the injection molding machines, are much too well honed to the task of mass production. AM technology would need to be much faster, more accurate, offer more materials than it does right now to even begin to compete. Those who claim that AM technology will disrupt manufacturing may not necessarily have a thorough understanding of the needs of manufacturing. This does not mean that AM manufacturing does not offer specific benefits to traditional manufacturing applications, and I'll go into those in a couple of slides later. One of the things I do see happening is that additive manufacturing will disrupt the supply chain to some extent, but probably not as large as many people believe. One of the key benefits of being able to use a 3D printer is that now engineers can make parts closer to their offices. They don't necessarily have to send something out to a service bureau. So the specific benefits additive manufacturing technology can offer in manufacturing applications are as follows. Probably the largest benefit is the ability to build something custom for minimal cost. The return on investment can be as small as one object. Additive manufacturing can handle complex designs better than CNC's or injection molding. As is commonly said, complexity is free in the additive manufacturing world because unlike CNC and injection molding machines, you can have a design with complex inner workings that a 3D printer can handle easily. Whereas to do so with a CNC, for example, the part may cost hundreds of thousands to actually produce. Additive manufacturing technology has another benefit in that it can help remove some of the assembly steps in a manufacturing process. Objects can be built whole rather than broken into parts that are made and later assembled. So this saves time as well as cost in the overall manufacturing process. But there are trade-offs here. Most additive manufacturing equipment is slow. Complex parts often take hours, at minimum, to print, and oftentimes overnight or a weekend to build. Small part production quantities, or small part production in the quantities of less than 10,000 is quite feasible from a manufacturing aspect. Any more than that, and you are better off using some of the other more traditional technologies. These systems at the moment are not really suited for mass production. They cannot really compete with CNC's or injection molding equipment for large quantities. It is so simple to stamp out a thousand pieces in a couple of minutes, and that is not something that you can do typically with a 3D printer. But even though you can print complex designs, many service bureaus will recommend that you break up a part into parts and assemble them later. The reason for this is that it speeds up the print-build process, which tends to be the slowest aspect of many 3D printing technologies. 
The other disadvantage is that your, your design will be limited by the materials available. You may be able to build prototypes out of a material that's close to your end require, requirements, but more often than not, the properties of these materials don't quite fit the need. So what are some of the enablers for additive manufacturing? Probably one of the biggest ones is the hobby maker market. It is keeping attention on this industry, which is helping spur further development. Some of the 3D printers in this particular area of the market are actually quite impressive in their abilities for the price. None can truly compete with the larger professional systems yet, but even something like the Cube from 3D Systems delivers a look and feel that is comparable to what the professional systems could produce about seven years ago. Some of the impressive desktop maker units include the MakerBot's newest editions, MakerBot 2, Replicator, and MakerBot 2X, the Form 1 from Form Labs, and even the new Cube X. There are systems being introduced all the time, so it's worthwhile keeping an eye on them. The more professional desktop units, for example, from Stratasys and Objects, such as the Mojo, which sells for around $10,000, and the Object Pro, which sells for more, are other systems that you might want to consider as being part of the enablers of this technology. So what will be needed in order for 3D printing to move much, much more into a manufacturing role? One of the first things that's probably going to be needed is some kind of a translation language other than STL. STL is an older language. It has served its purpose, but it no longer can take advantage of some of the features and capabilities that the newer 3D printers offer. There is a file format known as AMF introduced about a year or two ago that has the possibility of advancing 3D printing into much more of a, pro, of a manufacturing role rather than just prototyping. The key issue right now is that both CAD companies and 3D printer manufacturers must get on board with offering AMF as an alternative to STL. And this is something that end users are really going to have to push. Better materials is another thing that's needed. Materials that much more closely match the parameters an engineer is looking for. Right now we have materials that are close, but they're not quite there. Confidence. Engineers need to have confidence that these systems can really be useful to them. One of the things they're looking for is really good, solid, long-term test data. Test data that tells how a material, once it's printed, will perform over the long term. What its tensile strength will be. What are the elongation properties? What are the flexural stresses? What are some of the other stresses and properties that this material will deliver once it's printed? Some of this data is now being collected by the ASTM group. Another group that needs to have confidence in this material or in this technology is management. Management really needs to be convinced that these systems will not only save money, but they'll save money and time in the short and long run. They're looking for a really strong return on investment. Another issue that's necessary in order for this technology to really take off is engineers need to be much more familiar with how a 3D printer makes a part. They have this good, solid understanding of how CNCs work, of how injection molding machines work, but this information is only now just starting to be taught in colleges for 3D printers. A lot of today's engineers just don't know it. They don't have the exposure or the experience to 3D printers that would give them this information. They need design rules. They need to know that if they do certain things, it'll turn out a certain way once it's 3D printed. Right now, service bureaus are probably the main source of information for how you can operate with a 3D printer, how you can best use it to create the part that you need. Service bureaus are today's experts. But we need more of that information spread out throughout the engineering community. One of the great places to meet some of these service bureau experts is at a conference like the Additive Manufacturing Users Group. Materials and processes that can deliver resolutions of better than two thousandths of an inch, even more than maybe six ten thousandths of an inch, wall thinnesses as much as seven thousandths of an inch, these are some of the things that engineers are looking for. They want really tight tolerances, they want really smooth finishes, they want really high part resolutions. You can get some of these, but 
in, in many cases, 3D printing has to prove that it is on par with injection molding or CNC as far as the final part. If possible, the material should function as close to the end product material that an engineer has in mind as it can. Not every plastic and metal can be converted into a powder or filament and deliver the properties the engineer is looking for. On the opposite end, some materials in powder form actually can, go, can perform even better than some of the original materials, especially if there's additives put into it. So it's a real mix, but the engineer needs information on how this works, on how this operates, what is the data bank, where can they figure out, if they print a part out of certain materials, how is it going to perform? There are concerns and issues with being able to produce the materials that an engineer would like to have. For example, um, a lot of these materials have to take into consideration how they will be either hardened, um, bound, or dispensed in any kind of a 3D printing technology. There's issues of viscosity, density, flow rates, temperature needs, and material creep. All of those things make the actual design of new materials something of a challenge. Some of the other things that's needed, however, are clear materials. Those are very popular, and they need to stay clear over a long time. I'm going to reiterate again that part accuracy is absolutely critical. When a 3D printer is used to build a part, the dimensions that the engineer has specified should not change. But as many engineers have found, in many cases there is something like part growth, part melt, there is creep, there are issues with stability over more than a few days' time. Those are things that concern an engineer. The engineer would also like materials that don't require a lot of hand finishing. Uh, some post-processing processes are a bit involved, and an engineer would prefer that those be as simple as possible. The other properties that engineers are looking for is materials that are environmentally friendly, if possible, materials that will hold up over time, materials that can be used for the body, biocompatible materials, and, of course, the other thing that engineers are really concerned with is the cost of materials. Right now, the current model being employed by so many 3D printer technologies, that of the razor blade idea, where you sell the machine for relatively little money and you make your profits in materials, is something that a lot of engineers are taking issue with. Issue with. They would, are really looking for a prototype total cost materials, usage, all the other things that they have to consider to be a few dollars per part as opposed to maybe the 15 or $20 that it can often be in certain situations. So what are the greatest voids in the marketplace as far as turning 3D printers into an acceptable tool for manufacturing? Materials and better design software are the two biggest keys. Materials will absolutely be key to the growth of this industry, both for the professional users as well as the hobbyists and makers. Most parts made with any kind of a 3D printing system tend to have a little bit of a short lifespan that needs to be much more if you're going to use it in a manufacturing capacity. And design software? Right now, most CAD software is well-tailored for CNC's injection molding systems. It has not really begun to address the special needs of a 3D printer, how you can take advantage of how it operates, of how it performs, of how it builds a part to make the best use for creating a product. However, that is starting to change, but slowly. But once we have some of these things in place, then 3D printing will take its place alongside the traditional CNC and the injection molding machine. Each of these three major technologies is best suited for a specific type of part or product or production run or cost. So I don't see 3D printers totally taking over in a manufacturing capacity, but I do see them as an additional tool in the arsenal that is used in the manufacturing world. <laughs> 